do this. Hang on a minute. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, no video. Okay, maybe this one will work. Oh, I think it hurt. I think it works. Is it working? There you are. There he is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How thank are you so much for being here. No, thank you for asking. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't believe you were over there and I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah, I know. It's wild. It's funny. Are you, I never knew are about you lockdown? Lockdown. Sorry. Are you shut down as well on lockdown? On oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah, we live right in New York or right outside of New York. So we're getting it pretty much the worst of anywhere in the US right now. So it's not good. What about you? Are you all locked down? Yeah, stuck in the house. Well, God, and I've got, I've got plenty of things to do. But, That's good. Um, yeah. And where I'm do you live, Terry? Sorry? Where do you live? Um, I live in the Midlands, not far from Birmingham. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, not too far. So, London. Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, yeah. <laughs> it's not quite where we are, but there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have, no. I have a family there. I have dual citizenship, so I feel like ah. you know, I lived in Bath for a few years and went to school out there as well. Oh, Bath is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter's not too far from there. She's just in Bristol. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just up the road. So, have you yeah. been able to see any family since this has been going on? No, no one. Has, well, I've, I've, my brother lives on the same street. Oh, no. We haven't actually been able to sort oh, of... Right be in the same place, you know, yeah. we're, we're supposedly keep two meters away from everyone. I do see my neighbors and things, but sure. um, no, children I've not seen at all. They're coping okay, but. So six feet is two meters is what we've just learned. <laughs> yes. That's what we've been, yeah, we've been told awesome. six feet. I was right. getting ready to Google it. Dine was going to Google that. Yeah. yeah. Is these lights too bright? No, you're, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. <laughs> Look, in honor of Oh my gosh, from your Instagram. <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's amazing. Oh, hang on, I, can't, I don't know if I can get it in. Is that right? <laughs> you got it. No, <laughs> it's in there. Gingerbread so fries. Listening to the audio, he has built the gingerbread. Is it gingerbread? Yeah, gingerbread. Gingerbread Empire State. Oh, the Empire State oh. or the Chrysler oh. Building? I don't even know when I lived here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Chrysler Building. I just think it's, yeah. it's a beautiful building. And when did you build that? is about three weeks old when I when I was sort of um no it's not that old it's about two weeks old mm -hmm. yeah so well that'll keep you yeah busy. yeah just um fiddling about you know trying to keep things I'm, I'm all doing things anyway so I've been yeah. whilst in in um whilst in my what do we call it lockdown situation mm -hmm. I've been doing a Play work, oh. sculpture, made a few pots. Oh my god! That's a little bud vase. On the wheel? Like, yes. Yeah. You have the thing from the ghost? Do you have the thing from the ghost where you touch to me more and you? Yeah. The garden. Um, it's in the garden at the moment. But, Got it. Uh, Is Patrick Swayze also in the garden? I would hope <laughs> not. I would hope not. I'd rather have Demi Moore. <laughs> <laughs> No, and you might have a zombie situation if it's Swayze. That would, that would not be good. <laughs> yeah. I'd still go for a zombie Swayze. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to no. do Hey, you there. take what you can get. You know, in a quarantine, <laughs> you take what you can get. <laughs> yeah. we are, I'm quite picky. Yeah. We are massive fans of the show, obviously, and big fans of yours. Steve and I have uh, been doing this podcast now for a few years, and one of the constants has been always are when the next season is going to come out here, because we tend to, to, now we're getting them a lot quicker, but yeah. when they initially came out, we were kind of having to go back in time and didn't big fans of the show. Um, <laughs> Very big fans of yours, of course. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on your season in particular, we gravitated yeah. to you very quickly. <laughs> and oh. we wanted to vote for you like American Idol. We wanted right. to vote for you <laughs> in some way. It, doesn't, it didn't work. I kept calling the police. But I, we all really wanted to vote for you. Yeah, 999 here. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was a great show. I love being on there. It was. It was now your fun. daughter um, is the one that sort of signed you up, right? What's that? Sorry. Your daughter is the one that yeah. signed you up. Daughter. Um, yeah. That's I've always baked. Cool. I've always made things. Um, yeah. And they, you know, my family had always said you ought to be on there. Really, you ought to have a go. And I'd never really thought about doing it. And then. Um, as you know, I lost my wife and things weren't, weren't brilliant. Yeah. Um, so my daughter thought he would give me some sort of something to do. So, yeah. so yeah. you have to film somewhat of like an audition tape of you baking or how, how, what is the submission process like? It's a long process. Um, the form itself takes forever to fill in. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm useless. I'm useless on, on, um, technology anyway so um she did this form and she filled it all in and they and then you send a few pictures of your work that you've done past and then um if you get through that stage they telephone you they do a telephone interview and you answer a few questions which are just sort of dropped in out of the blue you know how do you make a genoese sponge or what would you you know so yeah it's just that and they do this te telephone interview and if you get through that stage they then contact you again and you do a what do you go next? Oh yes, you do two bakes, a savory bake and a sweet bake, and you take those to an audition. You, you meet loads of people up there, some and you see some fantastic creations and some not so fantastic creations. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um, yeah, it was great fun going to that. The whole process from the first telephone interview, really, right through to actually knowing that you're on the show is just as enjoyable as the show they look after you so well it, it, i can't i can't knock the company they they just they, uh -huh. they know what they're doing they do it really well uh, and i've got to say you know if anybody is interested in baking and, and want to have a go at it have a go because it, it's just it's just a life-changing experience really were you nervous oh, once you so first comparatively excuse me steve yep yep <laughs> Um, the show comparatively to, to like eat, like Top Chef and the things that we have here, it's so different because even the competition shows we have here could be pretty snarky and, and nasty. <laughs> Whereas I think a big appeal of the Great British Bake Off is that everybody is it's very sort of family oriented and that you are a family and that even though it is a competition and it's exciting and it does get a little bit cutthroat, <laughs> um, it it's still very much. It has that, that feeling of feel good, you know? Um, and I think that's probably one that, and it's beautiful, you know, it's in a tent and, you know, and it's in it's <laughs> the left country, correct? <laughs> it has its restrictions in a tent. I, I'm not good at that. Sure. <laughs> Was it very hot in there? Yeah. Everybody seems to say oh, it's so we have We have questions that we put together. We also had, uh, how hot was it? Oh, um, in Fahrenheit. In the <laughs> Hot enough that chocolate wouldn't set. Yes. So, wow. Yeah. Um, in was, every season, that's the case. No, uh, we, we had a freak year. Uh, and um, I mean, it was quite early on in the year when we're filming. It shouldn't have been that hot in the tent. Oh. But we had, I think it was the hottest recorded weekend um, for about 20 years. And then we were in this tent together with all the cameras, together with all the crew, together with all the ovens on. And there was no chance. I mean, <laughs> I laugh about it now, but it was just soul destroying. When you plan, you made these things, and I'd made so many of these. I don't know if you remember the Eiffel Tower that I made mm -hmm. uh, in chocolate. I'd made so many at home in the time. Um, it was reasonably easy to do in the right conditions, and and I was making these through probably the winter months, so spring winter months. Uh, it was. Great for tempering chocolate in my kitchen. And then um, you get into the tent. No, it was just a disaster. Even putting them into the fridge. <laughs> I put all the parts into the fridge, uh, got them out of the fridge, put them onto the bench. And the bench, I registered the bench at 33 degrees with the thermometer. So my chocolate tower just melted. Oh, into my the God. And um, no, there was no saving it. Can I ask how are you devastated? But no. How are your nerves in terms of being on this show, which I think you had already seen, you'd already watched it, you know, as a fan. 
So did you have nerves in terms of being on the show and being a contestant on the show? It's quite overwhelming. It's quite daunting, really, when you actually see that tent. Um, and you're going into the tent. You know, one of the 12 that are going to be on that show that season. It, it, yeah, it is quite nerve-wracking, really. Yeah. And then you bake, and you've got Paul and Prue, who are going to be... It's scarier. Yeah. <laughs> they're, scary. they're lovely, I've got to say. I really, I really like Paul and Brew and, and, yeah. and uh, Noel and Sandy are lovely too. And they, they're very supportive. And it, it isn't, when they critique, it isn't done in a nasty way. It's done in a way that, you know, you'd expect, I, I expect the comments that came. They were, there was nothing that was um, going to shock me, you know. Um, you're trying to bake something. And, and I think it is television and there's no way that... Really, you should be doing a bread and baking a bread in two and a half hours. You know, you don't do that. Um, there's no need to do that at home. But then there is in front of cameras, and, 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 and that's the competition element of the people that can do it and do it well. Right. They deserve to go through and do, you know, as, as, as well as they did. And Raoul was a, a consistently good baker. He had a very good year. And he had a great, he was a great lad. He's a lovely yeah. lad as well. Um, so, yeah, I've got, I mean, I, I've got no qualms or regrets about it. It, it was a, just to be involved was lovely and my first day just walking into the tent if they'd sent me home then job done you know you, you, you're walking out in this beautiful place right beautiful setting and then there's this iconic tent with benches and my name's on one of them you know <laughs> it, it's unreal yeah. I still find it unreal that's wonderful but it is wonderful, and it's a wonderful show. And like I say, right through the, the process of getting into the show and getting onto the show and getting behind one of those benches, um, you looked after. And, and, and um, I felt very well catered for in lots of, in lots of ways, you know, with, with um, things that were going on in my life as well. They, they, they were great. very important in everything. And, uh, I don't know if that's the same with every show, but it, it definitely was with them. And... The crew definitely love the show. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's more than just a job. A job, yeah. You know, the, it is a family crew and um, participants. It, it, it's a, it's a big. It's a happy place to be. It's not a, it's not strenuous. Once you actually sink into it and you forget it's all going on, it's, it's okay. You know. Yeah. And, and I, I probably didn't think that at the time, but looking back, you do, and it. Yeah. it I wouldn't swap that experience for anything. It's been, it's been life changing for me, really. It really has. That's great. I've got to see lots of things that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, Including people. this podcast. How about that? <laughs> Including this podcast. And you know, the crazy thing is, I couldn't believe coming to New York. I visit New York regularly. I, I love New York. It's, it's got to be one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, and we came over at Christmas with my children, and we haven't been there an hour when someone stops you in the street and says, oh, you know, it's Terry off the Bake Off. And I can't believe that Terry off the Bake Off in Little England, in Little Wordsley Village, um, is spotted in New York. That's so cool. Cool, it's cool, it's great, you know, it's lovely. Um, We've got questions for you that we put together and also, of course, letting people know that we were going to be talking to you, which has been a dream of ours for quite some time. Um, (laughs) We had a few other people send in questions um, as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Should we do that? Yeah. So sure. uh, when did you start baking and did anyone teach you? Um, I started baking very young, really. Um, my grandmother on my father's side was a fantastic baker. She baked nearly every day. There was always fresh bakes, bread, cakes. Um, you never went around my little nan. She was little. She was taller sitting down than she was standing up. Oh. Um, she was a tiny little thing, about four foot two. Um, but lovely lady. Really funny little lady. And, uh, but she baked. And I would sit and she would let me put things in and then she'd tell me what they were. She never, for the main things, she'd always bake little cakes every day. Little cakes or, or these um, like uh, butter biscuits. Never needed to look at measurements. She would put so much in and she knew, let me put it in and then I'd mix it up and you could taste it afterwards. So it started there, I guess. And my dad had obviously been with my little nan and had done the same. So he was always a great baker. Um, 
and cook. He was a good cook, as was my mother. Uh, so there was always food in the house. There was always baking going on in the house, um, savoury sweets. Um, I grew up, I still am a podgy person, you know, <laughs> we, we ate well and uh, enjoyed food and enjoyed the social side of food. I was from a large family. I have um, five siblings and, and uh, um, meal times were always the time when we all got together and, and we'd sit around a table and you, you, you know, it was family time. You, you caught up with each other at that. So food was always important, I guess. Um, I was quite artistic from an early age as well. And that, that again came from my little, little nan in a way. She was, um, she was a seamstress, a, a tailoress. She she could you know she could look you up and down and make you a suit. She was a fantastically clever lady, um, and uh, yeah, I've got a lot of time for her. She was lovely. Uh, so you know, I, I would cut patterns for her, or I would I would I would just see these things appear, and that I think got me into art um, because it's a construction. And the construction side of art is what I really love. I love the fact, you know, you can build things out of flat materials and make three-dimensional material items. And then it's just a, a mental thing of breaking down how you can, you know, whether I'm going to make a, a Chrysler building out of biscuit. You just work out which bits make which, what shape makes what. And that's the same with everything in art, with everything you make, whether it's a three-dimensional sculpture or a, a pot. You know, it, it's all the same basic three shapes you, uh, and if you can work those out you can make pretty much anything so I was always interested in that and then I suppose I brought my art side over to cakes and baking um, and make extreme cakes I mean what was on the bake-off is, is, is a very it's the tip of the iceberg of what I make um, I rarely show anything on social media I ought to do show more really I, I, I do keep thinking in this isolation period I might do Extreme um, baking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an extreme bake of some sort. Something that's <laughs> that people don't realise is natural cake or you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like a cake. That's I, I like the the uh, illusion, you know, illusion cakes that just don't look and um I don't want to sound too uh, I don't know, too sort of big headed about it, but my illusion cakes really are illusion cakes. You you wouldn't know what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and um yeah it's just so, it's another part of my i'm a little bit eccentric i'm quite i am very sort of in a great way eccentric <laughs> so it's one of my things i love to not pull the wool over people's eyes but just when somebody thinks something's one thing and then it's not it's completely different i love that expression and the way that it just you, the people you catch out and, and it, it's that initial um reaction to whatever it is you've made and that's mm -hmm. i i would do anything to to do that you know just to see that reaction yeah, yeah bit of an odd one really but that's great odd. <laughs> we love I mean, that too our intern still thinks she's interning for the joe rogan podcast so <laughs> we love surprises here too um, <laughs> that's good so, when you were when you were on the show week to week i know that you go home in between and you practice your bakes how much in your neighborhood are you were you getting noticed from being on the show during that time period while it was airing? You, um, everything is done and filmed before. Right. It's, so there, nobody in my street or in my life, even apart from my children, um, none of my brothers, sisters knew anything about wow. what I was doing. I was very secretive. And I didn't even tell my children what I was making or why I was making things, you know. It was really difficult because this is how uh, I, my front door's home, uh, open house, you know. Anyone can come in, my neighbours come in. They always know there's something baking on. So, you know, kids across the street pop in and have a biscuit or whatever. So it's always been that way. And then all of a sudden I can't leave my door open or I've got to be careful of what's in the kitchen because... Uh, there are bake-off recipes around, there are stuff, you know, I'm, it's all on the side. I'm making numerous Eiffel Towers in cake. What do you do with it when you finish with it? You know, it was ending up in the bin. Couldn't hand it out to people because the first thing their question is, A, why are you making this Eiffel Tower and are you on the bake-off? You know, it's like, you ought to be on the bin. And, and it's, 
it's really secretive time up until that point until you're on the show and then afterwards when it actually broke um they sort of published all of our names and our pictures and um uh it was you know gone live so it was amazing really i i went the morning after they released it on about 12 o'clock at midnight on the Tuesday evening, I think it was. And then on the Wednesday, I went to collect a paper from the Tesco's shop by us. And um, the young girl behind the counter had already, <laughs> and she clocked and she knew who I was and that I was going to be on the Bake Off. And it was, it sort of became real. Yeah. And uh, my sister-in-law saw it in the local paper. It's a free paper that's put on the, on the trains. They put them on the seats of the trains and she was going into work into Birmingham and picked it up and she thought, oh, that looks like, oh, that looks like Terry's on the bed. Oh, geez. <laughs> and that was me, you know, and, and, and then she's ringing around all of my, uh, my brothers, sisters, and in-laws to say, have mm -hmm. you seen Terry's on the Great British Bake Nobody would believe it. And then, yeah, I didn't believe it particularly. <laughs> and then it just sort of, it's there. And then the press are on your door. Um, not always, that was the, the not so nice side of it. Um, because they wanted not to know about the Bake Off or my baking, more about my um, bereavement. And, and um, you know, they wanted to, and, and in a nice way, don't get me wrong, they weren't sort of prying um, in any nasty way to, but things that were private and we, I, I didn't want to talk about or discuss, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it's still, still quite raw now. Mm -hmm. And, um, We've yeah. got um, a question from one of your fans who's also a friend of mine. She's a very funny comedian here, Shalaka. <laughs> and uh, she's actually an actual baker and does the recipes and stuff from the show. Um, and she wanted to know, did Terry throw those in? And I'm going to say this wrong, so you're going to have to correct me. <laughs> did Terry <laughs> throw those um, infamous terracotta baking clutches? Clutches, yes. Clutches yes. to the ground and stomp on them after filming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no i didn't um they unfortunately um lots of things lots of glitches happen in the bake off that you you, you, know, you probably don't get to see but um i had made some cloches that would fit the original bakes that i was making on the sizes of the ovens given to me by one of the team um prior to the bake. So I was making them in my oven at home in these cloches, which had then been proven and, and, and with terracotta, it has to sort of get a coat of fat in it and get hot and then it stops everything sticking to it. It actually seals the terracotta. So they were fine and they were working well. And then um, when we get to the, the actual filming of the show, they don't fit in the oven. So a quick set is made of new terracotta, which are much smaller and therefore, and haven't been proven for three weeks baking prior to the show. So everything's stuck in them and, and uh, they didn't work. They should have worked, but they didn't. And it didn't bother me. They're still here. Actually, they're up on the shelf here. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> awesome. oh, that's awesome. Oh, yes. Look at that. <laughs> She'll be very, <laughs> you know. yeah, but, uh, I do use them. They're great. I mean, it does make absolutely beautiful bread and it would have been the way that a curavai would have been made. Um, I, again, I'm a bit odd. I go to the letter of the law. When somebody says to me, you've got to make a curavai, I research a curavai and I make a curavai. I mean, I'm not knocking the other contestants and fantastic. They all made a bread. It wasn't curavai. Right. Actually, to make a proper curavai, you need three days anyway. It's a very slow prove. You put it in the other, uh, in the fridge to, to prove. It's a slow prove. Um, and that's what brings up the flavour notes, which you can't do in a tent. Mm -hmm. in, I think we had a six hour, I think that was a five or six hour challenge. Yeah, it was five hours, yeah. yeah. So there's no way you can do it in that time. Yeah. Um, but it was, again, it, it's a competition. And, and the ones that got them out, whether it was a barabrith or whether it was a, a, a fruit loaf, it doesn't matter. They got out a loaf that looked like, in the end, it looked like what a curavai wedding bread would be. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm a little bit more, I don't know, I, if somebody says something to me, you've got to do it that way. I'm a little bit sort of OCD about it. It has to be done <laughs> that way. Mm-hmm. And then it really annoys me when you don't do it that way. Um, so then we have... Then you have to put corners to get it done. <laughs> so. so then we have from Mitch in Orangeville, Canada. One thing I always wonder about the show is how much they're able to practice between episodes with most of them working full-time jobs. Would be interesting to see what he did, what you did to cope with that. And also he would just like to know about whether or not the group of the people from that season has kept in contact. Yes, we are in contact. We have a a WhatsApp um, group. Very cool. And we stay on that. I, Karen, who was the girl who went out with me, uh, we went out as a joint eviction. Karen and I speak every day. Oh, um, great. In recent, just, just. Hey, there's like Karen, the caravan, caravan, right? Yes, we did. We did a little tour of um, yeah. Europe in a caravan. We had a, we had a great, um, uh, a great time doing that. And um, yeah, I keep in touch with Karen, probably closest to Karen, but speak to Mo, uh, um, and also from other series as well. It's a big Bake Off family. I've also been talking to Yanni from series mm, 2017. Wow. So I was talking to her earlier today. Um, and Thomas, who was on the Christmas show. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we just keep in touch. It's really weird, but it's, and it was is. It, were you was, working during the shooting no, of the show? Uh, I'm, I, when my wife was diagnosed, I retired. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I don't, I shouldn't say that I don't need to work, but I, I have lots of little things that I do sure. that, that make me an income. Um, and I don't have to be involved in them. So throughout the show, I was one of the lucky ones that didn't work. Right. Uh, I don't know how those people that were continuing to work were able to make the time to produce the the... I couldn't have done it. I, I, I know that if I had been in a full working job, I couldn't have de- donate, uh, sort of given, designated that time to be making these things. It takes a long time. And yeah. you have to make so many of these, you know, I would say five, six run-throughs of your showstoppers at least uh, at home and get them down to the time. And that's the big thing, trying to get them in, 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 into that time scale that you actually end up with a showstopper at the end of that time and and I was doing it <laughs> I mean Paul Paul laughed and said you know you, you have time issues and I in the tent I had terrible time issues mm. no way was it ever be. but then at home you've not got three people talking in your ear you've not got to open mm. your and shut your door of your oven so they can film in there you've not got um you know where every all your equipment is at home it's so familiar yeah and then you're using odd equipment and not the same equipment um yeah it, it, it's a challenge it's a challenge to to bake in the tent it's not a it's not a an ideal kitchen situation it's not home kitchen um so those hats off to 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 the other guys that mm-hmm. you know produce some beautiful things uh, and, and some quite technically difficult things in that tent that hands up I couldn't do it, mm-hmm. you know. I, I, I went out later than I thought I should have done. I've gone out to eat one and been happy. You know? No way. No, you, you um, went out too early. Uh, well, I, I'm just... The only thing, my regret about the show is that people didn't actually see some of the things that I planned to make further on. Mm-hmm. Um, there, are, there were some quite complicated bakes. My pie was... I, I like classic cars. Um, so my pie, and I also like foraged food. So my actual savoury pie was a roadkill pie in the shape of a classic car, Whoa. which was, was a beautiful thing. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I, yeah, I think it's actually posted on my Instagram account. If you go on Instagram, there's a picture of the pie that would have been made. Um, and, and pastries are one of my... I should say one of my stronger points. Mm. I love modeling with pastry. It's like modeling with clay. And as a, as a sculptor and a, a clay modeler, working with pastry is just yeah. like a forte. You know, you, you just get onto it. You can make some really detailed pieces. And that's, 
that's where I love to, to work in, in, in um, yeah, making extraordinary things in, in pastry. And uh, yeah, you know, there's so many things. If I got to the final, I would have loved the final. And, mm -hmm. and Sandy, uh, she was very interested in what my final showstopper was going to be because they were going to make these um, edible landscapes. And I've made little model heads of Paul, Sandy, Prue, and Noel, and was doing the, uh, go on, gone out of my head. <laughs> the president's, uh, what do you call it? Um, Mount guys, Rushmore. What is it? Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore, but it was with the judges and the, as the heads. Oh, that's and then so each, cool. And each cake had a, what I thought was their personality behind it, you know, so a little bit fruity and boozy for Prue, and yeah, it was all, it, it, and it would have been a really nice piece, and I think I could have made it. But mm -hmm. You never know, do you? you never know. So yeah. you find <laughs> out everything that you'll be doing for the season. It's not like you just get like a list the week before. You have, um, you basically have about three weeks to practice each one, but they come on a run on a rolling list, so you don't know right before the filming. You know right to the end, but you start practicing your first one and then have to finish that to practice your second one um, within about a three-week period, and then the you know what it is after a couple of weeks, but then you're still practicing your first one, and mm -hmm. yeah, so. You, and you go right through to week 12, if, if that's a week 10, um, if you get there. But so. not the technical challenges, which you won, the non-bread. <laughs> Those oh. are blind, right? You go in and you don't no, know. Anything. You know nothing about that at all. Um, they really are blind. And we had some real corkers, didn't we? I mean, crikey, there were, some, <laughs> there were things I'd never heard of. Even, even the regular recipes and things, the signature bakes even, we're like, I've never heard of that before in my life yeah I think, I think the naan bread was probably the most the easiest one to produce um and the most recognizable by right for the sure contest really because yeah. it it's you know it's something you do make at home mm -hmm. you don't make what were those horrible moroccan things you i mean you just don't make them <laughs> right. i've never even seen them they made pru ill <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It was off the following day because... Yeah. I, yeah, yeah it was, uh, and so then when you and Karen went out in your caravan, I mean, and she's a, I, she's adorable, isn't she? Um, that's why I wore my stripes a little bit. Uh, <laughs> she'll like that. She's going to catch this after. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I loved, because I follow you both on Instagram, and so it was fun to see you both sort of posting pictures while you were... Um, in the caravan and stuff, which was is Europe Trek. What was the company of the motorhome? Uh, it's a Trusco. Trusco. Trusco Motorhomes, yeah. yeah. They, they're part of the Heimer group. Um, yeah, we, we, it was lovely. We had I had a lovely little two birth one, and Karen and John had a four birth. And, oh, so you were in two? Yeah, we were in two different oh. motorhomes. Karen and her husband were in the one motorhome, and then I Puddle behind in the in another one. I've got a motorhome here um, of my own, which I travel all over in, and I love my little motorhome. Um, and Karen's got a caravan, so motorhoming was. I think I think Karen has had a motorhome previously, but yeah. she's more caravanny. So yeah, it was really luxury to go out, and, and uh, yeah, we had a great time. It was a lovely place, and we 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 landed well for the weather. Um, mm -hmm. It could have been, it could have been, you know, cold at, at that time. It was this time of year. This time, yeah. 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 Almost a year ago today. Different times yeah. now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, it, it, it's just sort of bizarre, really, how things change in 12 months, isn't it? Very. But, uh, yes, we had a great time and um, managed to see some lovely things. Uh, Definitely do it again. So for sure. Uh, well, we want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, we're going to do up in our caravan, yeah. and we're going to go out. And we're going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> we're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I've always planned to do sort of like um, up through Canada, up through the Rockies, and and then on a, in a motorhome or a 
RV, take that up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, again, across the States, I'd like to, Route 66 would be lovely, but there's a lot of boring bits. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty long. Pretty long fuel. Yeah. Mm. Um, so this question is actually from my mother. <laughs> I'm from Judy C. in Columbus, Ohio. During these times when you can't run into a store for a missing ingredient, do you recommend anything that can be substituted? For example, what if you're out of eggs? <laughs> it's very difficult. I'm actually down to a last egg at the moment. Ah. I, yeah, my dog has scrambled egg every morning for her breakfast. And so that's her breakfast egg and I've got to try and get some eggs in the morning. But um, it's very difficult to replace unless I've got dried eggs here, which I can use in baking. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, didn't know I, I think I saw that in recent history that you could get such a thing <laughs> as dry eggs. Yeah, it's really good actually. And it works okay. I've heard um, of And egg white things. I mean, obviously you can get powdered egg whites, so. Okay, but if you were to run out of milk or dairy or something, I, for instance, there's a lot of vegan recipes that will use whatever they use. Yeah, you could use, I mean, but it's, at this time, it's very difficult to even get things like, you know, almond milk or everything's out of stock. So you've just not got to bake. Uh, <laughs> it's tough. Or, it's tough. Very few things. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm big on dairy. I love my dairy produce mm -hmm. in all my baking. Um, I don't substitute it greatly. Um, I'm very old fashioned in, in, in the fact, you know, I ought to do more and I've tried to do vegan and um, my daughter was recently diagnosed as having gluten intolerance. So I've been trying to make gluten free recipes, but they are really, they oh, are, you can't, it's hard. There isn't any, you cannot make a good gluten free bread. <laughs> No. And I had gluten-free pasta and I was like, I would rather just starve in the streets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's, there are certain things in life that just need things, you know, and good baking needs good dairy, good yep. butter, good cream, mm -hmm. um, you know, full milk. You, you can't substitute it. Unfortunately, it would be great mm -hmm. if we could. Um, Probably be healthier if we did. <laughs> That's true. So from our I'm research, vegan, so <laughs> <laughs> you're vegan. But she has other bad <laughs> habits that make up for the rest of them. It doesn't it doesn't it all evens out in the end. No, I'm I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Good chime in. I just, um, I just want to stir the pot. <laughs> pot stirred. Uh, um, <laughs> so uh, we saw in our research that you at one point were an air steward. We were wondering if there's any place that you have not been that you would like to visit. Um, I've not been to San Francisco and I really want to visit San Francisco. And I would have been there this year. Um, I've got an invite to come out to Los Angeles and um, I was intending then to take, extend that and go up to San Francisco. So I will do that um, mm -hmm. as soon as this dreaded virus is under control. It's um, a great city. I love San Francisco. Go. Yes, uh, my daughter loves. Uh, I, I mean, I quite a lot of people don't like Los Angeles. I like Los Angeles, um, and um, I've been lucky enough to be doing a little bit of work in there for yeah, a baking related show that is on Netflix in the states. All right, and May. I'm not supposed to say anything actually. Okay, yeah. but May to the UK, and that's it. So. Great. And I may be involved. Ooh, well, we are going to cross everything that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, extreme cakes. Just think extreme cakes. But do you think, so this is a question we like to ask people, if there was a place that you have never visited, but you had to live in, what would that be? That I've never visited, but I would like to live in. Mm -hmm. um, you have to move there without ever seeing it right. first. For seeing it. I think it would be somewhere in... Scandinavia, one Finland somewhere maybe. Mm -hmm. There is a place called, um, I think it's called Robin Army, which I have seen and my parents loved and I've never been, but it still sounds as unspoiled as it was in the 60s when they visited. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's so yeah, idea. I would probably, I would probably go out there somewhere. Um, get bored though, probably. 
probably. Yeah. I'd rather come to New York. Kind of like the, <laughs> <laughs> Let me come to New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. Candy, what's your answer for this one? Which what? What's your answer for this one? It was Hong Kong. Hong Kong, that's Hong right. Kong? <laughs> that's right. Candy's was Hong Kong. What was yours? Yours was wherever. Maine. Some, Maine. Maine. I Maine. saw a movie with Tommy Lee Jones where he goes there once and it mm -hmm. looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, Hope Springs. Hope Springs. Real, real feel good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> marriage. It's a big world, really, isn't it? We've got so many places to choose. Okay, here's another one that we'd like to ask our guests. Now, if you could choose one memory from your life that you could on demand relive, go into any moment that you that you choose, which would it be? And Can if I only you have wanna... one. What's that? Can I only have one? Oh, um, I, I'm torn between the births of my daughters, I think. Mm -hmm. We'll so, give you two. You can take two. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Being there at that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really, really happy moment for both myself and my wife. I think. That's wonderful. So, yeah, if I could keep visiting that, I'd be happy. Candy, um, what about you? Well, it wouldn't be that. I have a daughter, but it wouldn't be that for me. That was a horrible experience. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I suppose birth isn't very pleasant. <laughs> oh, it was not. The it result. Grateful. Um, but I would definitely say I think it was her second birthday, and my friend had made a little cape, and it was just one of those things where it was like a very simple day with a blow-up pool in the backyard, and friends and family were over, and I had a really nice buzz on from a good rosé, and I just feel mm. like that was a really good memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Don, yeah. Don, what do you got? Dine's only 21, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think the only thing that's happened, like high school graduation. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not having a senior year graduation. Yeah, that's sad. Because everything's shut down. No graduation. Yeah. I think they, they're going to like move it to August. Oh, that so you will have it in person? Though? That was totally a guess, though. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just like really hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope you get it. Right, you, Steve, what's your that, that time I saw Hope Springs was a big night. <laughs> that was, that yeah. was a fun night. <laughs> I would say that one. Um, uh, no, I went to... Uh, oh, I will say my mom did one, one time. They were doing like a Dancing with the Stars, Dancing with the Professors thing. And uh, me and my friend made signs, and there was like 20 total people there, but we made signs for her, and we were screaming uh, and jumping up and down, and she won the whole Dancing with the Professors thing. So that was a good moment. And my dad teared Your up. mother is a professor. Sweet. She wasn't just dancing with... Right. She was not one of the hired dancers. She was <laughs> one of the professors. <laughs> I'm not good at telling stories, Terry. <laughs> Normally, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's next? Candy's next. All right, so what are your must-have supplies for the quarantine? Ooh, must-have cheese, definitely. What's your favorite kind of cheese? Uh, I like a strong blue, so a Stilton, or a, um, a creamy blue, maybe a Roquefort, or yeah, one of the French cheese. And I do like a cheddar, a strong cheddar, mm -hmm. um, hard cheese. So yes, I'd have to have that. Uh, a good supply of beer, which I make. So oh, cool. <laughs> so I've got a brewery in the back garden. Here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> do you have a name for your beer? Uh, there's a number of names, yes. There, there are four different types that we bottle. Uh, um, we have a... Uh, what do we have? We've got a Red House Red. Long story short, I live in an area where they used to make a lot of glass, um, glass blowing and um, cut glass. And there's a big cone, a big chimney where they used to bake it all in a kiln just at the end of my street here, which is called the Red House. So all of my beers are based because it's Wordsley, it's the Wordsley Beer Company. Um, so we've got the Red House Red, which is a, a, it's a toasted um, grain, which gives this lovely red colour and quite a sharp, bitter flavour. Um, we've got the Wordsley Blonde, which is a, 
it's almost a lager, but it's based on an American blonde ale, really, um, and uh, it's quite crisp and a little bit citrus. And then I've got the um, cheeky bitter, which is, if you see the site, it's, glass blowers have these big fat cheeks, blowing glass. Mm -hmm. So it's a cheeky bitter and the bottle has these little fat men on with big fat cheeks, big rosy red cheeks. And that's, um, again, a bitter, but it's a traditional English bitter. And then we've got a mild, um, which I can't remember what I call the mild now. Got out my head. There you are. But yeah, we, we make a mild bitter as well. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, a mild beer. That's awesome. So, I do a ginger ale as well, uh, uh, an alcoholic ginger ale, but that's more about a Christmas time. I bring that out. It's just mm. steeped ginger. That's, that's nice. Delicious. Need it cold. Have it really cold on ice, and it's lovely. Um, I haven't got any of that, but mm -hmm. that would be a. Start. I should keep some of that in because it's. You, know, it's, you could drink it like pop. That's Not as I drink a lot. I'm not an alcoholic or anything. <laughs> <laughs> just put it. That's why we brought you here today. We think it's uh, time to talk. It yeah. would be on my, on my staple wine. Mm -hmm. a good red and meat of any kind mm -hmm. um yes i love not meat. a vegan is what we're <laughs> <laughs> i'm very sorry to all the vegans i'm sure there's <laughs> merits in it to those people but i grew up in a you know yeah we did we had meat every day we had a roast every day you know it, it was it was mm -hmm. something that that was just and I have to do it, I'm afraid. And that, even this weekend, I mean, I, I roast a leg of lamb this big, you know, which, for myself, um, which I had a roast dinner, and then I've made mazaka, which are frozen, and I made mm -hmm. some ice kebabs, and you just use it all up. And that's what I've had to find since I've been on my own, um, adapting food to, you know, you, you, you cook a lot of it, but then you then make it into other things. and, and Right. And, which is coming really well now. Yeah. I was I was moaning the other week to my daughters that I've got freezers full of food that I'll never eat. Ta -da! Now I you will. The virus, I can eat it. <laughs> it will be there. Is there a recipe that you've never been able to master that, that has always been difficult for you? Um, hmm. No, because if, if there's something I don't master, I just don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. I'm not, I don't persevere very often. And mm -hmm. I have a stable amount of things. You know, uh, I do some things really well and other things moderately well. And if I don't do them well, I don't do them. So That's fair. I, I just sort of know I wouldn't. Um, I don't know what I have attempted and not been happy with. A few things, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Souffles are always a pain for me. Uh, Souffle, I think that's. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's one of those. I don't know. Well, I only I might have it. My oven hasn't probably been on since I've lived here. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a toaster oven, and I have one pan. Um, so <laughs> the one thing I've always wanted to make is a risotto. Oh yes, yeah. Um, so that's one of those things I think I'm gonna put on my list because I can do that with one pan, right? <laughs> do you not? Yes. Do you not cook it like rice? That's my. That's what I would think. Rice. It is yeah. rice. It is rice. Risotto is a rice. Yeah. Rice. 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 Yeah. Well, you just important. To, you yeah. cook some, right? I cook yeah. um, occasionally, especially now. Uh, <laughs> times are tough. Uh, money's not exactly coming in, Terry. Uh, <laughs> we're in for some lean cuisine. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I make egg whites in the morning. That's, that's what I'm good at. Egg whites. They're not powdered egg whites yet. No, no. Yeah. I take the real egg. I put the yolk in the garbage. Yeah. Oh. What would on your why? face for a mask? Oh. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Protein. Protein mask. I think mm -hmm. you're right. Yep. Or you could take a painting and do some tempera. Use egg tempera. Ooh. What's that? No. You use the yolk. Um, you remove the yolk sac, but use the yolk in your pigment. And that's the binding agent. And then you paint. Uh, Temper is a really lovely, lovely media wow. to use. Um, it's quite, it can be quite pastel and gives a very, what's the body? Oil, like if you look at oil, it's a completely different, uh, how could I say? It's more of a chalky sort of finish. Yeah. But you get some beautiful effects with temper. Mm -hmm. oh, it's a miracle. Cool. 
There you are. So you could use your egg yolks for that. There you go. See? Look it up on the internet and have a go. If you can find, <laughs> find some pigments. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. Give it a shot. What do you think, Terry, what do you think the first thing that you're going to do once these chains break, once this quarantine is lifted? What is the first thing you want to do? Um... I want to go out for a long drive in, in, in an old car and pack a picnic mm -hmm. and visit one of my favorite picnic spots. Hopefully with my daughters would be lovely. And just, yeah, relish the moment that we've got freedom again, you know, and that you can go out and do yeah. things that you find normal, that mm -hmm. you take for granted really. So, yeah. Pack myself a really nice picnic and um, uh, pack up my one of my cars and, and drive into the country. Go to my favourite to go place is, is a little castle by me. It's a, well, it's a forty-five manor house called Stokesy Castle, uh, and I went there as a young boy with my family and my dad, who was particularly interested in such things, and. Um, fell in love with the place. If ever I could build, if ever I had enough money to rebuild a building I could live in, it would be Stokesay Castle. Oh, have you built it in cake form yet? Um, oh, that's I, nice. That's a good one. I could do that. I? Yeah. I yeah that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just the most beautiful building. And, um, you know, it's just living history there. And I, I, I could quite happy. So I would probably go there, have a picnic. and. Um, just sit in this, hopefully a sunny day when it's yeah. over. I just want well, to we might, we might be into winter, haven't we, really? Yeah. yeah. I, want to a bar. I just want to sit in a bar mm. and I want to be a real mess. <laughs> <laughs> People everywhere and it's going to be gross and everyone's going to be disgusting and I'm so looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll go for my picnic in the day. Yeah. And I'll probably get quite hammered in the yeah. morning. There you go. <laughs> what about you, Dine? I think I'm going to join Candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. Well, it's going to be a sloppy mess. I'm just letting. <laughs> okay, <watch>. I'll, <laughs> I'll take care of Candy. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, what are you going to do? Um, I, after I join you guys, <laughs> uh, go home to Philadelphia, see my family. So I think I'll oh. probably do that once this is over. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I should visit my mother. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> Well, our plan was, my mom lives in Ohio, and our plan was to visit her for Easter, but of course, you know, don't want to bring her the city. How is, she, is she doing well, Ken? Yeah, she's fine. She, she's built for this. Great. This is no different than her regular she's prepared. life. prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so one of our last things here, we have a bit of a speed round. All are welcome to answer. These are sort of an either or. Candy and I, we can rotate. Um, mm -hmm. First question is Jaffa cakes. Are they biscuit or are they cake? Which one do you prefer? Mm-hmm. The cake. The cake. Okay. Yes. The cake. Um, milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Dark. Yeah, I'm a big fan of dark. I never was. No, I am. No. No, no dine? You're not old enough yet for the dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, countryside or beach? Ooh. I want to go, I want to go back because Terry needs to know this information. Oh, okay. Steve does not eat chocolate. Don't like it. <gasps> Doesn't like it. Don't like it. Yeah, I just he needed to know. I oh, I didn't no. want him to have a false pretense of who you were as a person. You know? <laughs> Terry, I'm a sick puppy. I don't know what to tell you, pal. But I don't like chocolate. <laughs> How can you not like chocolate? Yeah. Yep. It's honestly the taste of it, and I don't yeah. like it. Well, what else? <laughs> 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 yeah, we all, you know, we're all different. I mm -hmm. appreciate that. Some are better than others, and yeah. you know, in this case, what that is. The country or the beach? Oh, chocolate cake. <laughs> no. 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 I like a I like a vanilla cake or give me a coconut. Good night, nurse. I love a coconut. What What is the one thing that we love that they make the um Montfleur the Mil uh, Milfu 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 Milfoy? Yeah. Nailed it, guys. <laughs> we love those. We're very yeah. cultural here. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Uh, the country or the beach? Um, country. 
yeah I, I love beaches say. but yeah i love walking and um mm -hmm. yeah we 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 spend a lot of time in in this uh, in this country i don't know if you know the lake district mm -hmm. it is just the most beautiful yeah. i mean you have some beautiful places in the states and, and i've got to say you know um yeah beaches are they're great but they're beaches <laughs> they don't vary a great deal really do they? Sand. Mm -hmm. a bit of sand a bit of water uh, you know, yeah yeah what so, about what about steak or chicken steak what's your favorite kind of steak um i like a ribeye mm. or a porterhouse mm -hmm. mm. now when there was the mad cow's disease that was a pretty big deal um, and it you was. couldn't have it on the bone. Did that affect your life? It did. It did affect my life. I like a T-bone steak. And, yeah. you, and you know, no T-bone steak. Right. And you know, a good butcher. <laughs> right. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that was a big thing, wasn't it? That's a few years ago now, isn't it? That's got to be 20 years ago. Is that how long it has been? It must have been, yeah. I definitely don't remember it, so. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> More than 21 years ago. Yeah, it probably is, actually. Thinking about it, it's got to be. So, yeah, it says that it started in 1986 is when that really started. At its peak was 93. Still wasn't born. <laughs> okay. You know, you see? Yeah. That's a long time ago. Now, this one question here. I think we know the answer to, but painting or sculpture? <laughs> um, ooh, I like both, but sculpture would have yeah. to come, come tops, I think. But I love doing both, so. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good at either, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you showed us some great stuff already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're sitting in front of one of the greatest sculptures of all time that you right. made, so. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Indeed. Now, I know you've got a super secret project that you're working on, but do you have anything like a... Is your beer for sale? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So ah! we want to tell the people where they can get that. Can they get it um, here? They wouldn't be able to get it in the States, no. It doesn't travel very well. That's fair. <laughs> like a lot of, be like a lot of um, craft beers, they, 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 you know, they're short-lived lives, so... Most of it is casked, mm -hmm. so it's not bottled. Uh, I intend to bottle more, but um, yeah, it is for sale. And great, it's not in production at the moment because I can't sell it, and it will it will go off before I get to sell it. So that's no. no, not in production. Um, Got it. Is there anything else you'd like us to promote for you? No, not really. No. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> We know that they, we can follow you at Terry the Tash on they can. Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they can. Terry the Tash one um, on Instagram, I think. Oh. Okay. And yeah. I mean, there are things on there if anyone's interested. I might do a little bit of artwork that, um, oh. yeah, just to pass the time and I. Yeah, I'll right. Maybe the, the tempered eggs. Yeah, tem right. tempera. Tempera. It's oh, a, you don't have the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the eggs. I've got. No, I, I, yeah, you know, I'm sort of thinking of posting something on that people might be interested in watching. Yeah, that would be great. I don't. I don't. I'm terribly. Uh, what would I say? Backward. I live in the past, mm. uh, and this is all like newfangled. To me, I, I haven't got any social media whatsoever, even a mobile phone before I went on the bake off. Wow. You know, that's how far behind I am. Um, <laughs> and uh, they sort of basically forced me into having these things. And um, I don't know if I'm enjoying it or not, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. This is lovely. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can ask me on Instagram. I'll, I'll definitely have a chat. But, um, yeah. It, it, I don't know. I live in a very old, old-fashioned world. My world yeah. is. Well, we thank you so much for coming on. We can't believe that we actually got you, and it's, it's so nice to meet you. You're lovely in, in person, and uh, thank wow. you so much for taking your time to talk to us. 
No, not at all. When this is all over and I come to New York, I will have to meet you. Both in yes, Paris, we'll go right? out. Candy will be at the bar. We'll pick her up and then we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll keep going with our night. That's uh, right. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you to thank anyone you listening. Me. And yeah, we love you guys. And we'll and tag you and send this to you as well because we're going to yeah. try and do video and sound. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank Great you so school. much, Terry. No, not at all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Right. <laughs>